Okay, so in this video, I just want to go through LumaFusion 2 and give my first impressions of it. This just came out three days ago. I've been traveling like I often am, so I have not been able to get out a video on it yet. So it's three days ago at the time of this recording. It'll probably be, you know, four days by the time I get this uploaded to YouTube. So we're going to dive in and see what it's like. We've been waiting for LumaFusion 2 for a while since they announced it. And now this is the big time where we actually get to dive in and use it. LumaFusion has already been such a powerful video editing app that it's just really exciting that it's getting better all the time and that we're able to take a leap forward in version two and that they're giving it to all of us for free. Now on that note, this is the page in the app store and if we scroll down, what you'll actually see here is that LumaFusion 2.0 is on sale right now. So it's on sale for the old price, and so you want to go ahead and buy that by June 27th, 2019, if you're watching this in time, because that will save you $10 off of the price that LumaFusion is going to be from now on. You can see that it's got a 4.8 out of 5 with over 6,500 ratings on the App Store. It is the best video editing app. I'm not affiliated with LumaFusion, but it's just been incredible to be able to use it to be able to edit things here on the iPad. You can see it's number one in photo and video. And so we're going to go ahead, we're going to dive in. I've opened it up to import some footage, but I haven't really gone in and looked at it yet. So we're just going to jump in and see what we can find. All right, so what I notice right away here is that it doesn't look that different. So they did say they were going to change the UI up, but from right here, the project screens, it's looking pretty similar. So we still have our folders where we can get to the different sources that we want to bring in. We still have our projects down here. So let's just uh, try and make a new project right now. So if I want a new project, I guess uh, go down and hit the plus button. New project, just like normal, we can select our frame rate. I'm going to go ahead and just leave that at 30 with a 16 by 9 right now. And just call this one test. And then this has always kind of tripped me up. It looks like it's still the same. The plus is actually what you do to start the project. So you actually have to hit the plus in the top right corner, which I think is not the most intuitive place for it to be. But once you know that it's there, it's fine. Okay, so now we have our timeline. And what we can't see right away, but what we know from the release notes and from the videos that LumaFusion's done is that we can now add six tracks of video and six tracks of audio, and the video can have audio attached to it. So that's a lot more than we had before. So let's see, let's just try and bring in some video. Go in here to my imported footage, and just try and grab one of these videos from recent trip. So, and I tap it. It appears over here side. One thing appears to be a little warning symbol. I'm not sure what is going on with that little warning symbol, but you can see that if we can go ahead and we can actually scrub through the footage here. Now bear in mind, this is 4K footage shot at 60 frames per second and this is an iPad 2018 so it's not the, the most powerful iPad in the world so it, it can be a little bit jerky when you're scrubbing but even so LumaFusion does a pretty good job of skipping it around and getting you what you need to see so I just want to see if I can still use gestures to set the in and out point Looks like I can. Swipe up is the out. And the swipe down is the in. And then I can move that around if I want to, if I set it to a particular time. And then looks like I can't drag from there, but I can drag from here. Drop it in. So just drag from the window down into the timeline. And there it is. Okay, you can see here it says, this clip is not fully compatible with this iOS device and may cause crashes and playback issues. 
I'm guessing that that's either because it's just too big or because there's something, this was shot with an Osmo action, so there might be something in the way that the Osmo action's shooting that iOS doesn't like. But it appears to be playing fine to me, so I'm not that worried about it right now. So we'll see. I wonder if there's a way to clear that warning so that it's not showing up all the time. Because that would be annoying. But that must be the warning that's on all of these. I shot this whole trip with that Osmo action. So this little side menu will pop out the track. So we have locking. We have our insert mode like normal. We have our visibility and whether or not the audio is playing. Okay, pretty simple. Um, this will allow us to control audio levels. Oh, okay, so there's a little add button right there so that we can add things in like titles. Okay, that's nice. I don't remember if that was there before. And then all of our editing tools have moved down here, so they're no longer in the toolbox, which is one of the things that they told us would be happening. That's the duplicate. Okay, let's do undo that. And that must be the separate. Oh, you know, I think when I did open it to import the footage, I did do think that if I hold down on the gear over here, it will actually show us what everything is. Okay, cool. So then we can learn our way around. So we have detach the audio, link and unlink, edit, presets, use the clipboard, split, and remove. Okay, nice. So let's select this clip and let's just go ahead and let's detach the audio. I'm pretty sure I do not. Oops, pretty sure I do not want the audio from this clip because it's just car noise. So we'll just go ahead and delete that. And the interesting thing is it doesn't look like it actually deleted the audio. Okay, I guess it did delete the audio, but it just left the waveform on the thumbnail of it as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's bring in another clip. I'm just gonna bring the full clip in this time and drop it in there. And I'm gonna drag it up to another track so we can kind of see what this looks like. This was one of the big new interface features is if you go right underneath your media viewer, you can actually jump around the timeline and you can actually be zoomed in quite far to the timeline. And you can jump around without changing your zoom level at all. That's not giving me any audio either. Even though my volume is on. Well, I don't know why I'm not getting any volume playback here, but let's continue looking around at this. So if we want to make any edits, all of our edit tools are down at the bottom. When we highlight a clip, we get them. And so let's try editing this clip. So this still looks very familiar on the edit screen. We have color and effects. We have audio. We have speed and we have motion. They call it frames and fit. So nice, let's try adding a keyframe right to the beginning. Okay, so it looks like that works essentially the same as it always has. And for those of you who are new to LumaFusion, keyframing is really quite easy in LumaFusion. It can be a little tricky to figure out at first what you're keyframing because you have to be on the right hand side here. You have to be in the right sub menu to see your keyframes. So once I'm in size and position, then I can see my size and position keyframes. So it's very useful and really pretty simple to be able to do it. Let's just go in here. Let's see. Looks so like our presets are basically the same here. You can make different levels adjustments. OK, 
Okay, it looks like things are mostly the same in the edit menu. Okay, down in the bottom right, we have a few different layout options. I normally stay with the standard layout option. I just find that that one's easy. But yeah, it looks like these are the same. I do know that one thing that I can't show you here is connection to an external display. So that is possible now. You can connect to another display through HDMI and then you'll get some different layout options down here. At least that's one of the things that they said in the notes was coming. So I assume that it actually works, but I can't show you because I don't have another monitor to show it on right now. Okay, let's try trimming a clip. Looks like it's working the same. You can split a clip. Move it. Set this clip out here. I guess the main timeline always has to have something going on on it. There we go. And any changes are reflected right here along the mini timeline up there. Okay, one other thing that they said was new was to add markers. I see the plus marker button right here. We can give it a name. And we can give it a color. And then we can see those, I guess, on the mini timeline and just tap them to get to where we're going. I think that's going to be really useful. It's definitely something that's been missing from this program. And then let's look at our export here. It looks like export is basically the same except there's LumaFusion project package. I don't think that has been there before. I don't know if that's the XML one or if that's just for moving between different versions of LumaFusion. But we'll see. So overall um, this update looks like it's good. It doesn't look like there is anything too drastic here. If you're used to editing in LumaFusion I think you'll still be able to edit here fine without any problems. There doesn't look like there's going to be much of a learning curve just learning where the buttons are located now. And there's a couple of new features. I expect there to be a lot of improvements to this when iOS 13 is fully released because we'll be able to access external storage and that's really going to change the game in terms of video editing. So very excited for that. I know that there have other plans for new updates to LumaFusion as well. They're definitely not just putting this out and being done with it. So there's exciting things happening. It is incredible the type of work that we can do now just on our iOS devices. Let me know your thoughts on LumaFusion 2 update in the comments below. What features are you really excited about? What features do you hope that they will bring as they continue to work on this? And I will be putting out a course on editing with LumaFusion on the iPad shortly. So that will be going up on my Skillshare page. So please check out my Skillshare. And I have other videos on editing and designing on the iPad. So you might want to check those out as well. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe.